Hello, my name is Ted Repshaw Jr., a longtime member at Zion Lutheran Church. Thank you for attending our online service. Look forward to seeing you in the very near future. Have a great day. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your Spirit, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin, and made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. You are great, O God, and greatly to be praised. You have made us for yourself, and our hearts are restless until they rest in you. Grant that we may believe in you and call upon you, know you, and serve you through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The first reading is from Zechariah, chapter 9, verses 9 through 12. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout in triumph, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you. He is just and endowed with salvation, humble and mounted on a donkey, even on a colt, the foal of a donkey. I will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the horse from Jerusalem and the bow of war will be cut off, and he will speak peace to the nations. And his dominion will be from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. As for you, also because of the blood of my covenant with you, I have set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. Return to the stronghold, O prisoners, who have the hope. This very day I am declaring that I will restore double to you. Here ends the reading. The psalm today is Psalm 145, verses 8 through 14. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. Lord, you are good to all, and your compassion is over all your works. All your work shall praise you, O Lord, and your faithful ones shall bless you. They shall tell of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your power. That all people may know of your power and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. Your dominion endures throughout all ages. You, Lord, are faithful in all your words and loving in all your works. The Lord upholds all those who fall and lifts up those who are bowed down. The second lesson is from Romans 7, beginning with the 15th verse. For what am I doing I do not understand, for I am not practicing what I would like to do, 
but I am doing the very thing I hate. But if I do the very thing I do not want to do, I agree with the law, confessing that the law is good. So now, no longer am I the one doing it, but sin dwells in me. For I know that nothing good dwells in me, that is, in my flesh. For the willing is present in me, but the doing of the good is not. For the good that I want, I do not do, but I practice the very evil that I do not want. But if I am doing the very thing I do not want, I am no longer the one doing it, but sin which dwells in me. I find then the principle that evil is present in me, the one who wants to do good. For I joyfully concur with the law of God in the inner man, but I see a different law in the members of my body, waging war against the law of my mind and making me a prisoner of the law of sin, which is in my members. Wretched man that I am, who will set me free from the body of this death? Thanks be to God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then, on the one hand, I myself, with my mind, am serving the law of God, but on the other, with my flesh, the law of sin. Here ends the reading. The Holy Gospel is for this fifth Sunday after Pentecost is from Matthew, the 11th chapter, beginning with verse 25. At that time, Jesus answered and said, I thank you, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hid these things from the wise and prudent and have revealed them to babes. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in your sight. All things are delivered unto me of my Father, and no one knows the Son but the Father. Neither does anyone know any man, the, the Father, except the Son, and he to whom the Son will reveal him. Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. The Gospel of the Lord. Dear friends in Christ, grace to you and peace from god our father and from our lord and savior jesus christ amen it's a day after the fourth of july it's summertime and here we are we feel tension stress overwork exhaustion fatigue we're worn out we have long hours no rest does that sound familiar here, when it's supposed to be a holiday weekend, it may sound like your daily work routine now that you're either homebound because of the virus or you're uh, skeptical of the health practices around you. It could sound like your struggle while searching for truth and answers to unsolved questions. This is what you find when you try to tackle every problem without help. This is what you find when you look to yourself for answers that aren't there. Today's message is one much more helpful lesson than that. The message for today is a message of relief that Jesus gives when we rely on him for our strength and our peace. It's a message about taking the yoke of Jesus willingly, walking through life side by side with him, and following the leadership that he gives us each day. John Botts once relayed 
This story about a farmer plowing his field with a team of oxen. The man noticed that one of the animals was seemingly a little bigger than the other, so he asked about it. The response from the farmer was very interesting. He said that the big animal was the older animal that was well chained, and the smaller one was a young animal that was new to the yoke. The man went on to inquire as to why he put them together, and this was the answer he got. Well, you see, it's like this. The older ox is the best one that I've ever, ever had. But he knows his way around the field. The reason I put the younger one with him is so that the older, more knowledgeable ox could teach him how to plow. If I never put them together, the younger one would never learn. By himself, the younger ox would pull himself to death, but together he learns to cooperate with and rest in the strength of the older ox. From John Box's book, Rest for the Stressed. In the gospel message for today, Jesus talks about carrying our burdens and giving us rest. He uses the idea of a yoke to accomplish this. My dad grew up on a farm and always enjoyed explaining how they, we used to plow the fields with teams of horses when he was little. As time went on, they eventually bought tractors and used them to do the heavy work. But the stories of using animals to work seems like a difficult life for this kid who grew up on the farm and became a city boy. When I think of a yoke, I think of hard manual labor. But instead of work, Jesus refers to a yoke as prefer, providing relief. How can such a difficult farming tool be used to reduce the weight of the burdens we bear today? Jesus loved to use ordinary things in the world to explain more difficult concepts. It was common for him to use symbols from agriculture to explain his ministry. Today is no different. Using the example of a common yoke, he has a message for us today. He wants us to take his yoke and submit to his lead. He will bear the weight of our burdens. The yoke keeps us on the same path. For those of you who are not familiar with the yoke and how it's used, notice in pictures that you could even Google of what it is. It was often a piece of wood attached between two people, between two animals. It was used as a tool so that whatever was pulled behind would be attached to both of them. The two would work much more effectively than one could because they're able to pull their strength and pull in the same direction. They can work together and pull loads that one animal could not handle alone. The yoke makes a connection between the two so that they work together toward a common goal. They can't stray far from each other because the yoke restricts where they can travel. You have to follow the same path. The experienced is always there to share with the inexperienced. One of the things Jesus tells us to do in verse 28 is to come to him. Come to him to share in his yoke. He wants to cooperate and join together and wants us to walk through life together with Jesus Christ. Just as a yoke keeps a team in sync with all the work, Jesus wants us to follow the same path and go in the same direction as him. We can't go our own way. We have to allow ourselves to take his lead. The yoke of Jesus shows us which way to go and how to tread and go in our lives. Through his actions, he leads us. The yoke allows us to submit to Jesus' lead. A strong young athlete was wading waist deep in a shallow park of a recreational lake. Unknowingly, he stepped off that underwater ledge and plunged 15 feet beneath the surface of the water. After sec several seconds, he bobbed to the surface of the water, flailing his arms and gasping for breath. The lifeguard attentively watched the situation from a nearby bank. A friend of the struggling boy said, 
Aren't you going to help my friend, the athlete? You've got to help him. The lifeguard continued to watch the struggling swimmer, but remained unmoved as he bobbed up and down, kicking and screaming and splashing wildly. The young man's friend furiously yelled at the lifeguard, If you won't go after him, I will! Calmly but firmly, the lifeguard said, No one can help him yet. I'll help him when he's ready for my help. After a couple more minutes, the young athlete stopped struggling, stopped flailing in the water, and went limp. The lifeguard suddenly dove into the water, swam out to the young man, and brought him to shore for a successful rescue. Later, the friend asked the lifeguard, Why did you wait so long to help my friend? And the lifeguard responded, as long as he was trying to save himself, there was nothing I could do for him. If I swam out to him, he would have grabbed me and pulled me under with him. Only when he was weak, exhausted, and giving up was I able to save him. The story of the struggling swimmer is so much like our own struggles through life. If we continue to struggle on our own, with our own actions and deeds, we will get nowhere and maybe even get hurt, and our chances at living will be squelched. When the swimmer finally submitted, the lifeguard was there to rescue him. The younger ox, from our example, had to submit as well. If he chose to struggle against a stronger ox, he got nowhere and only tired himself out. Instead, it was his interest to submit to the lead of the stronger ox and allow him to share the work. Similarly with ourselves, if we depend on our own efforts to save ourselves, we'll struggle in vain as well. If we fight against the will of God, we will get nowhere and only tire ourselves out. But Jesus is there waiting for us to submit to his rescue effort and to pull us to the promised land. He's waiting there to show us where the path is as long as we submit to his leadership rather than depending on our own efforts. The yoke allows Jesus to bear the weight of our burden. Jesus is stronger than us in every way imaginable. He's powerful. He's knowledgeable. He's morally upright. He's pure. He's stronger than anything of this world. He defeated the temptations that we fall victim to, and he did it with a forgiving heart. When we feel like we have the weight of the world on our shoulders and don't know where to turn, Jesus is there to take those burdens. He's not only able, but willing to take that load off our backs and bear it to himself. Just like the younger ox was able to transfer his concerns to the older ox, we could transfer our concerns from ourselves, the weaker, to the stronger back of Jesus. We can rest in the strength of Jesus as he carries through the burdens of our life. When he stumbles, we're, he's there to pick us up. When the weight of our shoulders is too much for us to bear, he's there to pick us up and allow us to continue on our journey together. When we have no place else to turn, he's there to support us in our time of need. Allow yourself to be yoked to Jesus and he will lead you down the path of salvation. Allow yourselves to be yoked to Jesus and he will lead you and teach you how to survive the burdens of your life. Allow yourself to be yoked to Jesus and he will bear your burdens for you, support you when you need to be supported, and provide relief from the everyday stresses of life. When you're over your head with burdens, remember, they are still under the feet of Jesus. He will always be able to pull you up from the difficulties and set your life right with him. Amen. <laughs>
eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Come to unity with one another in the whole creation. Let us pray for a shared world. We pray for the church, sustain us as we share your word, embrace us as we struggle to find our common ground, lift up leaders with powerful prophetic voices, pray us from stand in faith, hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We pray for the well-being and creation, protect the air, water, and land from abuse and pollution. Pray us some empathy in our care of creation and direct us towards sustainable living. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We pray for our nations, guide leaders in developing just policies and guide difficult conversations. We have some vision that hires relationship building. Lead us to expansive love for our neighbor. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We pray for all in need, for all who are tired, feeling despair, sick, or oppressed. Take their yoke upon you and ease their burdens. Give you consolation and free us from all that keep us bound. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We pray for this congregation, blessed pastors, deacons, and congressional leaders, energized children's ministry volunteers, church administrators, and those who maintain our building. Shine in this place that we might know us the ways your love transforms our lives. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We give thanks for those who have died in faith. Welcome them in your eternal rest and comfort us in your grief until we are joined with them in a new life. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We see these prayers, O God, and those two deep words through Jesus Christ. Lord. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. We are bold to pray the prayer our Lord taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Receive the benediction. 
The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace today and always. Amen. These times are crazy, um, they're stressful, and they're unpredictable. But the one thing that we can predict for sure is that the bills keep coming in. So your continued financial support of Zion Lutheran Church is very important at this time, and we really appreciate you. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. You have the email address for Zion Lutheran Church at the end of this video, and we really appreciate you. Hope to see you in person soon. Thank you.